ऑनरेबल प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द अंधेरी कोट बार श्री मिश्रा जी कुशवाहा जी ओझा जी एंड अदर कमेटी मेंबर्स ऑफ अंधेरी कोट बार एंड माय फेलो लॉयर्स इट्स इंडीड अ प्लेजर टू बी इनवाइटेड टू अंधेरी कोट टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट Andheri court I have been coming since inception because my office my residence was very near at Juhu opposite Amitabh Bachchan's bungalow so this was my nearest court and this is indeed a pleasure that we are meeting today to discuss about the Indian Evidence Act today aapko Indian Evidence Act ki kuch khubiyan pehle batata hu fir hum uske कुछ पहलुओं पे चर्चा करेंगे ना आई वॉज एंथ्रॉल्ड टू लिसन टू एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ नाइंटी ईयर्स एंड स्टिल रीडिंग आई थिंक ऑफ द वर्ड विच इज यूज विद लॉयर्स दैट वी लॉयर्स आर प्रैक्टिसिंग वी आर नेवर परफेक्ट वी कंटिन्यू टू प्रैक्टिस and if a 90 years of experience is telling us that please continue to read then think that how much is yet to be read by us thank you thank you sir for such words of enlightenment and wisdom i once again wish you a very very happy birthday and on behalf of andheri bar i wish you to make a century very soon <laughs> and i hope that we shall be celebrating thakkar sahab century also over here <laughs> now <clears throat> coming back to the topic of today we are here to discuss about indian evidence act now indian evidence act is a very peculiar act this is the only statute which applies both on civil law as well as on criminal first september 1872 this law was promulgated now section 1 if you see of the indian evidence act it says that it applies on all the judicial proceedings except affidavits and except on arbitration now this is surprising because most of the lawyers have this misconception that if they have notarized the document on affidavit that becomes an evidence please be careful because the indian evidence act in section 1 itself declares that this act applies on all the judicial proceedings making exceptions of affidavit and arbitration though there is a judgment of alabad high court where it has been held that as far as the affidavit is concerned it is a discretion of the court to admit the affidavit as an evidence or not secondly with the lapse of time and the practice it has also come to the notice that as far as the arbitration proceedings are concerned it is again the choice of the parties to arbitration as well as the arbitrator whether to use the provisions of indian evidence act or not and if all of them agree then the indian arbitration act 
can also use the provisions of Indian Evidence Act. <coughs> now why I'm telling you is this, because these provisions which are applicable since 1872 are still continuing. Although just last week I had an opportunity to meet the Law Minister of India who was visiting Bombay. Ravi Shankar Prasad was here and I had an opportunity to inform him that Indian Evidence Act needs a lot of amendments and a lot of improvements because ironically if you see some of the provisions which have been added later on after the IT Act of 2000 was introduced we all are practicing lawyers we must be facing this difficulty each day that how to prove an electronic document a digital document an email. Now provisions of section 65B applies but it's so cumbersome that if you read 65B of the Indian Evidence Act you begin and by the time you reach to the end you forget what is the beginning. It's so cumbersome, it's so badly drafted and most of the times even the courts find it extremely difficult to understand. Because if you see section 65B of the Indian Evidence Act, it says that because it's a secondary evidence, you need a certificate along with the secondary evidence to produce before the court that this is a genuine document. But it's very difficult to find out who's to issue that certificate. Because 65B says, that the person who's operating the computer or owning the computer can give the certificate. Now it's my personal computer, so my evidence, I'm only giving a certificate. It fails logic. So I had this opportunity and I told him that these, these things required streamlining. Secondly, most of the sections, if you go through Indian Evidence Act, still recognize the Act of Parliament of England. Now we are 70 years down the line being independent, sovereign, but an Act of Parliament of England, why should it be treated as a conclusive proof? So there are various aspects which we will discuss in this course of discussion. But coming back, Section 1 also declares the territory on which Indian Evidence Act applies, which till now states except the state of Jammu and Kashmir, which I'm sure very soon will be changed. So now Indian Evidence Act will be applied throughout the territory of India. Thereafter, there is an interpretation clause under Section 3 and 4. Certain very, very important <coughs> definitions every lawyer must understand because to conduct a trial is like laying down a foundation of a building. In the words of my father, he was a senior counsel Supreme Court and he used to say that the practice of Supreme Court and High Court is superficial. The actual work is done in the trial court. So he used to say that son, whenever you get an opportunity to attend a trial court, never leave it. Because in the trial court, the foundation of a case is built. And if the foundation is strong, the building remains strong. If the foundation itself is weak, howsoever good the case at Supreme Court will collapse. So trial ki jo bahut important cheeze hain, wo section 3 mein hi pata chalti hain. Pehli hai, 
फैक्ट क्योंकि ट्रायल में फैक्ट बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होता है सुप्रीम कोर्ट और हाई कोर्ट के जितने लिटिगेशन होते हैं वो लॉ पॉइंट्स पर होते हैं पर फैक्ट ट्रायल कोर्ट में प्रिडोमिनेंट होता है और सेक्शन थ्री कहता है डिफाइनिंग फैक्ट इट सेज दैट एनी थिंग स्टेट ऑफ थिंग और रिलेशन ऑफ थिंग इज अ फैक्ट एनी मेंटल कंडीशन इज अ फैक्ट तो अब आप देखिए फैक्ट को अगर आप एनालाइज करें तो दो चीजों को वो कवर कर रहा है एक है फिजिकल एक्टिविटी कोई भी एक्ट हो रहा है वो फैक्ट है और दूसरा है एब्स्ट्रैक्ट कोई भी मेंटल कंडीशन वो भी फैक्ट है तो ट्रायल में कौन सा फैक्ट ट्रायल का पार्ट बनेगा इसके लिए फर्दर सेक्शन थ्री कहता है कि जब कोई ट्रायल चल रहा है तो उस फैक्ट में से कौन सा फैक्ट फैक्ट इन इशू है तो ट्रायल दो चीजों पर चलता है फैक्ट इन इशू एंड रेलेवेंट फैक्ट तो ये फैक्ट इन इशू और रेलेवेंट फैक्ट क्या है मैं आपको समझाता हूं सपोज अगर आप एक चोरी का ट्रायल चला रहे हैं और एक्यूज पर एलिगेशन है कि उसने बी के घर में चोरी की है फैक्ट इन इशू इज चोरी और चोरी के ट्रायल को कंडक्ट करने के लिए अगर कोई यह बताए कि जिस आदमी पर जिस अक्यूज पर चोरी का आरोप है वो आदमी कुछ दीवार तोड़ने के हथियार लेकर जिस जगह चोरी हुई है उस तरफ वॉक करते हुए आधे घंटे पहले देखा गया था नाउ प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड वॉकिंग ऑन अ स्ट्रीट विथ सर्टन इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स टूवर्ड्स एनी डायरेक्शन इज नॉट अ क्राइम बट इन द ट्रायल ऑफ थे This walking with instruments towards that house where the theft has happened becomes relevant. तो फैक्ट इन इशू है चोरी लेकिन उस फैक्ट इन इशू से पहले के घटनाक्रम और बाद के घटनाक्रम चोरी के बाद जिस व्यक्ति पर चोरी का आरोप है वो बहुत सारे धन के साथ एक मेले में पैसे उड़ाते हुए पाया गया 